Hey everybody, welcome to this very simple video presentation on how to install a Microsoft single tier PKI uh, installation. This is part one of a three part video series and we want to take time in this video just to go over some of the very basic concepts. First of all, terminology PKI, which stands for Public Key Infrastructure. It's just a way to describe the servers that make up actually issuing the certificates. And the analogy I like to use is very similar to you obtaining a driver's license. If you go to your local DMV, you walk in the door, you can see their certificate on the wall, their plaque or some kind of state-based document that proves they are who they say they are. It makes you feel all nice, warm and fuzzy inside, right? That you're actually at the right place as opposed to, over, as opposed to being over at Uncle Harry's garage um, where he issues those fake IDs that we wouldn't want to obtain. I have some way of telling from the information that I get, the same way I get a good feeling when I walk in the state-run DMV, that the driver's license they're actually going to issue to me is valid. And the Microsoft PKI kind of does the same type of thing. So I like to use that DMV analogy in there to try to have it make more sense. I get questions from students all the time. You know, I don't get it. Like, why would I use a certificate or or what is PKI all about and why would I even bother using it? You know, it's kind of like when you're in math in high school and you're trying to figure out, you know, why you're taking pre-calculus and algebra and statistics and all these were classes. Am I ever going to use that someday in a job? Well, you know, we can use this type of analogy to have this all kind of make sense. So what we want to do is, first of all, describe that this presentation is super, super oversimplified, okay? We're not going to get into a lot of the technical details here in this video, but one thing that I do want to describe are the basic differences between the choices of the type of PKIs you can actually set up. You can set up either, in the, in the Microsoft world, that is. In the Microsoft world, we can set up either an enterprise PKI uh, or we can set up a standalone PKI. And the benefit of an enterprise PKI is that it works with Active Directory. Let me just move this over here. 300 here. I'm going to slide this up just a little bit so I have some room here. Now this enterprise is going to give you the ability to publish, which is an important word in the certificate world, your certs to Active Directory. So that would be a benefit of being an enterprise CA. You can also, if you're an enterprise CA, do something very cool, which is called auto enrollment. Now, these are the type of things that I can do in an enterprise CA that I can't really do with a standalone, right? So these are very specific to being enterprise CA type topics. Uh, if I'm a standalone CA, that means I can't see Active Directory at all. I can't do any kind of auto enrollment whatsoever. Now, there are some times with an enterprise CA you can't do auto enrollment. But with a standalone, you just can't auto enroll a certificate, All right? So the analogy to the DMV would be, if I know who you were, if you've lived in my city for all 30 years of your life and you've never gotten a driver's license before and you walked in, I'd look at you and say, oh, Joe, I know who you are. Here's your driver's license. That'd be some type of analogy to auto enrollment. Now, I know it would never work that way, but with a standalone CA, It'd be some guy that set up a dri brand new driver's license office in your city. He's new to your city, doesn't know who you are whatsoever. You know, everybody else in town knows who you are. When you come in to ask for that driver's license, he's going to need to see all your documentation. He's going to need to look at it a little bit, verify it, let you go home, call you back a few days later, tell you to come in and pick it up, right? Where the enterprise kind of already knows who you are because you're a member of Active Directory. So if I already know who you are, I have, if configured correctly, the ability to auto-enroll a certificate to you. So that would be one of the, the, the main differences. Now what we're going to do in this video demonstration is we're going to demonstrate installing an Enterprise CA. And the Enterprise CA that we're going to install, let me just change this real quick, we're going to be installing what's called an Enterprise Root CA. And what that means is he's going to be an Enterprise Root, that means he knows about Active Directory, which we have here. Right? We know that we have AD, and he's also going to get what's called a public key and a private key. During the installation of the CA, he generates a certificate. He inserts his public key into that certificate, 
And I like to do this also with all the certificate stuff. Let me just see if I can do this. Let me take this public key out. Initially, the public key is kind of sitting here. The public and private key get generated. Then the certificate is going to be built. The public key will be placed into the certificate. And then the certificate will be signed by the private key. Now, something very important here is that the public key and the private key are mathematically connected to each other, which is a very important point. And the public key we make available to everybody, just like everybody knows where the local DMV is. But there's, there's something about that DMV that was set up that's private that only the DMV knows about that makes him official. We don't, we don't publish that information out to everybody. We just let everybody know uh, by the state website where the DMV is. So the CA equals DMV. The CA equals DMV. So your, your certificate authority, your CA, which is the top of your PKI, public key infrastructure, is your CA. Just like you know where your DMV is. It's where you go get your driver's licenses. Your CA is where you go to get your certificates from, right? Now, when you go to the airport, before you go through security, you have to show your driver's license. If the person checking your driver's license thought that was a, you know, thought that was a fake ID, they're not going to let you through that security line. If you get pulled over by a police officer, he checks your driver's license, looks at the date, makes sure it hasn't expired, goes into his police car, checks his computer, makes sure it hasn't been suspended for a DUI. We can do those same type of things only with a computer certificate. So like instead of carrying around um, a driver's license, your computer is carrying around a certificate, which is kind of like a driver's license. And also some private information that nobody else knows about. I mean, the person that holds the driver's license does know things that are not on the driver's license. For example, their social security number and some of those type of things, right, that are private to them. So it's kind of a similar concept. So we're, before we start the, the GUI demo, we're installing an enterprise root. And I'm not going to get into all the details of what a policy or a CA policy INF file is and all those restrictions and all the different things. All we're going to do in this first video is just install it and get it up and running. Then in the next video, we'll take a look at how to actually issue a certificate to your website to get SSL based encryption to a particular folder on your website. So let's go ahead and dive in with the GUI. Okay. So here we are at our CA. It's installed. I've got a name. I got an IP address. I've got a mask gateway pointing to my DNS server. I've joined it to the domain, which is very important. This uh, enterprise CA demonstration is definitely something where we're going to have the computer joined to the domain. So that's an important thing. We also have to make sure that we're logged in as the enterprise admin. So then we just click start, go to administrative tools, and we're going to go into server manager and we're going to go to roles. And adding the CA is a, a role, not a feature. Click Add Roles. We pick uh, Active Directory Certificate Services here on this main list. And then we click Next. Kind of tells us what we're doing. Uh, it's important uh, to note that um, you know when you install Certificate Services on this computer, the name of the domain and the computer uh, cannot be changed. Uh, once the CA has, CA has been installed. So you'd have to actually uninstall certificate services before you could go do something like that on that box. You shouldn't be changing the name of the CA, right? I mean, the CA name is going to be embedded in all those certificates you deploy. It'd be kind of like in the DMV example. If I had, if I had the name of my DMV stamped on my driver's license, and then the DMV changed their, their name. It, would my driver's license still be valid anymore? Now DMVs don't really do that too often because they're kind of just from the state. I mean, an office location can change technically, but if the name changed from DMV, you know, to some other strange name, it just, just wouldn't make any sense, but you get the idea. We can't change the name or the domain affiliation of the machine. So pick a machine that you like to be the CA, name it something you like, plan it out ahead of time and stick with it. Don't change it. Certificate authority, certificate authority web enrollment. Now we really don't need the web enrollment uh, just to do a demo, but I want to show the two most basic forms of attaining a certificate, which would be through auto enrollment or through the web-based enrollment tool. You can also use third-party apps to request a certificate. You can also use the computer uh, certificate snap-in 
on a Windows 7 machine, for example, to request a certificate. But at least this shows you the basic ways you can obtain a certificate. Now, new features in 2008 were the online responder and the network device enrollment service. We'll look at those in other videos. New features in 2008 are two, our certificate web certificate enrollment web service and certificate enrollment policy web service. Now, if I was not logged in as the enterprise admin, I would have this grayed out. The option to pick enterprise here would not be available. And it's a little bit of a coincidence that I have to be logged in as the enterprise admin to get the enterprise option. It's just an enterprise CA. That means it recognizes Active Directory. And other reason the enterprise option might be grayed out is because the computer's not joined to the domain. So those are two things right there that you always, always got to watch out for that. And we're going to make this a root CA as opposed to a subordinate. We're building a single tier hierarchy. So we're not going to have a subordinate involved. It's going to be an enterprise root. And we're going to create a brand new private key. We're not importing a key from some other CA that we built before. We'll crank up our key length a little bit to make it a little bit stronger and our signing will stay at SHA-256. This is an important screen. This is where you determine your cryptographic capabilities of your server upon install, right? This is going to build that initial first public and private key you're going to build for your CA. And we're going to give it a good name. We'll call it Enterprise Root. And we'll say the certificate is good for five years. Actually, this is a very important setting. Usually you want this to be double whatever you want your certificate lifetimes to be. Because you're going to have to, at some point, come back and renew the CA certificate. So if I make this six years, that means all the certificates I issue should be for three years. Put your database log files on a mirror and put your database, actual certificate database, on a RAID 5. So mirror the lock files, RAID 5 the database, just like in any standard Microsoft install, like with Exchange, you do the same thing, SQL, those type of things. And then IIS, because we installed the web enrollment tool, we do have some IIS options here. And it just warns us about not changing the name and domain name after the install. They warn you about that. Everything else looks good. This is not bad. This is just a warning. You haven't done anything wrong. And then you can do the install and you're on your way. So we got everything we need for a very simple Microsoft single tier PKI. You got like 300 users in your company. This is perfect. You don't need to have a standalone root and an enterprise sub. You don't need to have a three tier hierarchy until you get into being a really large organization where you got multiple multinational type companies. The basic install is pretty good. Also keep in mind during this install, there is no CA policy INF file involved. We could have added a policy to our CA, to what types of certificates we can issue, to where we're going to publish our information, those type of things. We just, to keep it simple, we just left it out in this one. All right, so as far as the install goes, we're almost done. I just want to show you how to build a snap-in. I always like to build a snap-in for my PKI, just so I have like a separate little tool to manage everything in. So we're going to add remove snap-in. And we're going to add in certificate authority first. And we're going to add in certificate templates. And I'm going to show you why I want those two in there. We'll just call this cert tools real quick. There we go. So I have a snap and I can open up. All right, so not too bad. The installation is very easy. And right here you're looking at your CA. That's your enterprise root CA. That's your DMV. That's your Department of Motor Vehicle. That's where you're going to go to get your certificates from him right there. And this little list down here, this is also at the DMV. This is just a list of all the driver's licenses I can get, right, or could get. This is a, a list of potential, potentially available certificates. Now, there's one thing I always like to show here right at this point is after you install your CA, you get the main certificate authority main snap-in tool shows your enterprise route. You can see if you've revoked any certificates, any issued certificates, pending requests. And we have the pending requests and failed requests if something went wrong. We can also see the certificate templates that we are currently allowed to issue. And then we have this other snap-in, the certificate template snap-in, which is a list of all the potential certificates that we could issue. So this is a list of the actual certificates we can issue. This is a list of all the certificates that we could issue. 
So if we were to compare it again to the DMV, this is a list of all the driver's licenses that we could issue. This is a list of the driver's licenses that we are currently allowed to issue. If I want to add a driver's license or certificate to this list, I can simply, you know, pick that option. Like I want to have a uh, basic, let's see what do I have on the list there. I have a basic EFS. Let me pick some other type that's not so common. Enrollment agent. Do I have enrollment agents on the list? I don't. So if I want to issue a driver's license for somebody to be an enrollment agent or a certificate, I can just pick this uh, enrollment agent certificate as one that I want to deploy. I just go up here to certificate templates. I right click. I choose new certificate template to issue. Now this is considered publishing a template, right? Not publishing a certificate. This is just the template to build the certificate with. And then I can add that brand new certificate to my list. And now I can actually issue that enrollment agent certificate, right? So that gives me that option. There it is right there. I can now issue that enrollment agent certificate, right? So now my list of what I can actually issue is a little bit longer, one longer, based on this list of what I can issue. So that gives you a pretty good idea of the overall process of actually getting your enterprise root CA installed. So that's all we have is the enterprise root. He has a certificate. Now that certificate is signed with a private key and we can actually see that certificate. If we go out to the computer, go out to the windows folder, windows, system 32, cert serve, certain role, and there's our certificate. And we can see under details, we have our public key and there's the public key. So that's the public key right there. And there is the signature algorithm that was used to sign this certificate. So you can see the version number, it's uh, X.509 version three, the current version, the serial number, just like any thing you purchase, any kind of physical, like electronic equipment would have a serial number on it. It's unique to that particular certificate. The signature algorithm that was used, the hash algorithm, the issuer, who it came from, how long it's valid, starting date, ending date, good for six years. You can see that ending date, the subject information, the public key, the template that was used to build the certificate. Uh, because remember, it's kind of like printing money or just like building those driver's licenses at the DMV. You have this base template that you use to actually build the certificate from. So this certificate that has all this information is about two to four K worth of information on average is all built from a template. And that template name is included in the final product. So you can actually see what template was used to build the certificate with the subject key identifier, the CA version, the key usage, what it's used for. Um, we could limit the use of the certificate by including a CA policy INF file on the CA before the installation, which we did not, but we can see what it's currently used for its thumbprint and its thumbprint ID. And we can see all that information right there. We can also see the path. Now there's not a, there's not much of a path to see here. It's very limited. Uh, we only have one CA, but we can see the path all the way to the root of this self-signed certificate. And that gives you a pretty good idea of the initial install. In the next video, we're going to take a look at setting up a website and issuing a certificate to a website from this particular server. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.